Hey guys, today we're gonna to talk about the best vegetable for gastritis. Can you guess what it is? Cabbage. Let's talk about why that is right after I get done telling you what gastritis is. So it's an inflamed stomach. It's not a little thing. It's a major, major problem. For your stomach to become inflamed, it takes years. Sometimes it could take less than that, but usually it's a chronic problem after taking aspirin for many, many years for some other problem, or you took steroids, or your diet has been really bad, or you've been taking antacids chronically that left you with now an inflamed stomach. You may or may not have an ulcer, but the lining of the stomach is inflamed and it's very sensitive. So if you were to dump a lot of acid into your stomach, it may cause a lot of pain. The main symptom for gastritis is upper central abdominal pain. You have pain right here. It could be gnawing, dull, burning. And I used to have this in college. Of course, I chronically was under massive stress, very little sleep, lot of sugar and refined carbs and junk food, not to mention a ton of coffee. And you're probably also gonna have uh, bloating. Now there's some other triggers for uh, gastritis. One would be H. pylori. That infection destroys the mucus lining in the side of the stomach. That mucus lining is very, very important to prevent acid from eroding and irritating the inner stomach. Also, H. pylori is going to destroy the acid-making cells, and so the pH of your stomach is going to go higher and higher, more alkaline, and that's going to make it really hard to digest protein and kill microbes. So you're gonna be very susceptible to having other infections, getting food poisoning, for example. Let's say you had some chicken that wasn't thoroughly cooked, and then you get this bacteria. Now, there's also a factor in your stomach called the intrinsic factor that allows you to absorb B12. So without the stomach acid, you're gonna not have enough intrinsic factor and then you're gonna get anemia, not to mention a whole list of B12 deficiencies. It just so happens that the remedy for gastritis is the same for H. pylori. You want to consume food high in sulforaphane, and that would be cabbage or broccoli sprouts, or a combination of both of them. But cabbage also has other phytonutrients that greatly help in reducing inflammation because they're anti-inflammatory. Not to mention, it's loaded with vitamin C, which actually cleans up a lot of the free radical damage uh, that's coming from all the inflammation. Now, the cabbage could be in a juice form. It could be in a coleslaw. Uh, you may be able to do a sauerkraut, but it's interesting that other vegetables will cause a lot of cramping, but a person with gastritis can pretty much tolerate cabbage pretty well. Your diet in general, if you have gastritis, is crucial. You just can't be on any diet and eat any food. You have to be very selective. The food has to be very high quality. You cannot do any junk and you need to be doing intermittent fasting hardcore because you want to let your stomach and intestinal tract have a chance to not be exposed to food so it can heal. And so I would highly recommend that as well. There's some other things you can do to inhibit this uh, microbe if you have this infection. That would be mastic gum. You can get it as a supplement. It works pretty well. Now, normally in your body, um, most people have this microbe and it doesn't create any problems. It only comes out of remission and becomes a problem if the environment is very unhealthy. So as long as you start eating healthily and you keep your stress low, this should stay into remission. But my recommendation, and this is just my opinion, is that you don't try to kill this off because everything that you're gonna to use to kill that off, talking about antibiotics, is gonna come with a package. It's gonna create side effects. And then you may become antibiotic resistant, and now you have a whole other series of problems that you have to deal with. All we wanna do is put this microbe in remission so it doesn't bother you. And check with your doctor before taking any of these recommendations. This is just my opinion. So that being said, there's some other things to do. One is a probiotic. Probiotics inhibit H. pylori and they also reduce inflammation. You wanna get a good one, a liquid probiotic that doesn't get destroyed 
by the acidity of the stomach would be a good idea. You can also chew on raw black seeds to help reduce some of the pain, let's say an hour before the meal. And lastly, zinc carnosine is one of the best things for not just gastritis, but any type of ulcer you have in your body. So this is definitely a very important thing right here. Now, you may also uh, think you have SIBO, and you may have SIBO. Small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. That's a situation where you have the microbes that should be in the large intestine, but they're in the small intestine where they shouldn't be. So if you're doing cabbage or any type of vegetables or even probiotic, it's going to feed the microbes in the wrong place and you're gonna get more bloating. Now, in other videos, I tell people to do a carnivore diet, okay, if they have SIBO. The problem is, is if you have this infection right here and you have a low stomach acid and you're consuming a lot of meat, protein, without the hydrochloric acid to break it down, it's not gonna work. So there are several pieces to this puzzle that you wanna look at. And I would first start with the cabbage, okay? and some broccoli sprouts. And realize gastritis takes months to heal because it's a major, major problem. And as you apply this information, this thing will go back on remission. The stomach will slowly, slowly heal to the point where you don't have it. Then you can start to acidify the stomach with apple cider vinegar, betaine hydrochloride. But if you took it now, uh, you may create more inflammation of your stomach. So that's your plan for addressing gastritis. Thanks for watching. Hey, we're back. With another amazing recipe. No grains, no sugar, totally keto. There's no suffering in keto. Absolutely not, Karen. And it's an immune system builder. Absolutely, you have to check this out. I think you should hurry up, watch the recipe, and make it yourself. It's just so easy to be keto. But is it simple? It's super simple. We hope you enjoy making it as much as we are enjoying eating it.